Linda Sarsour spends quite a bit of time trying to convince Americans that they would absolutely love Sharia. You'll know when you're living under Sharia law if suddenly all your loans and credit cards become interest-free. Sounds nice, doesn't it? Wow, so if I sign up for Sharia, I get interest-free loans and credit cards. Not to mention child marriage, spousal abuse, raping female captives, stoning adulteresses, the death penalty for apostates, and the violent subjugation of all non-Muslims. Sharia, come for the interest-free loans, stay for the pedophilia and female genital mutilation. Speaking of female genital mutilation, you'll never guess who just got caught lying to all of her gullible followers about female genital mutilation. I'll give you a hint. I am every Islamophobe's worst nightmare. She's every Islamophobe's worst nightmare. Someone who constantly lies about Islam in order to deceive people who would never in a million years sit down and actually read an Orthodox Muslim source. Obviously, if you're trying to get Americans to warm up to Sharia, you have to keep them utterly ignorant of almost all of Sharia. Just keep telling them about the interest-free credit cards until they're being forced to convert with swords at their throats. Police recently arrested a gang of female genital mutilators in a Detroit suburb. The three suspects are all members of the Daudi Bohra sect of Shia Islam. Now, as warped and twisted as our ethical views have become here in America, people still tend to agree that doctors shouldn't be chopping off little girls' clitorises. So who's going to step in and protect Islam from criticism? Everyone's favorite fake feminist responded to the arrests with, Female genital mutilation has no place in Detroit or anywhere else in the world. Female genital mutilation is barbaric and is not an Islamic practice. I agree with Linda Sarsour that female genital mutilation is barbaric and that it has no place in Detroit or anywhere else in the world, but I'm confused by her claim that it's not an Islamic practice mainly because Muslim scholars and her prophet say the exact opposite. For instance, the sheikhs at the Fatwa site, Islam Question and Answer, were asked to comment on this topic. A concerned Muslim wrote, Nowadays we hear that many doctors denounce the circumcision of girls and say that it harms them physically and psychologically, and that circumcision is an inherited custom that has no basis is Islam. Sounds like something Reza Aslan would say. I mean, the argument about the female genital mutilation being an Islamic problem is a perfect example of that. It's not an Islamic problem, it's an African problem. Well, I mean, wait, wait, wait. The scholars replied, Praise be to Allah. Firstly, circumcision is not an inherited custom, as some people claim. Some people, including Linda Sarsour and Reza Aslan, Rather, it is prescribed in Islam, and the scholars are unanimously agreed that it is prescribed. Not a single Muslim scholar, as far as we know, has said that circumcision is not prescribed. Think about this. Linda Sarsour tells her followers that female genital mutilation isn't an Islamic practice. But actual Muslim scholars say that they unanimously agree that it is an Islamic practice and that they can't find a single Muslim scholar who doesn't think that it's an Islamic practice. Oddly enough, this would suggest that actual Muslim scholars don't regard Linda Sarsour or Reza Aslan as scholars. And yet Sarsour and Aslan are constantly paraded across news channels as experts. It's as if our news channels don't want accurate information about Islam. But let's see why Muslim scholars are unanimous on this issue. Their evidence is to be found in the Sahih Ahadith of the Prophet, which prove that it is prescribed. For example, 1. The Hadith narrated by al-Bukhari and Muslim from Abu Huraira that the Prophet said, the fitra, fitra is a kind of natural predisposition human beings have because they're created by Allah, is five things or five things are part of the fitra. Circumcision, shaving the pubes, cutting the nails, plucking the armpit hairs, and trimming the mustache. This hadith includes circumcision of both males and females. So female circumcision is part of Allah's created order, according to Muhammad, the prophet 
of Islam. Two, Muslim narrated that Aisha said, the Messenger of Allah said, when a man sits between the four parts, arms and legs of his wife, and the two circumcised parts meet, then ghusl is obligatory. The Prophet mentioned the two circumcised parts, i.e. the circumcised part of the husband and the circumcised part of the wife, which indicates that a woman may be circumcised just like a man. Female circumcision was taken for granted by Muhammad, so much so that he could describe sex as the meeting of the two circumcised parts. Strange that Muhammad would take female circumcision as an absolute given, while Linda Sarsour describes it as a barbaric practice that has no place anywhere, let alone in Islam. 3. Abu Daud narrated from Umm Atiyah al-Ansariyah that a woman used to do circumcisions in Medina, and the Prophet said to her, Do not go to the extreme in cutting. That is better for the woman, and more liked by the husband. But the scholars differed concerning this hadith. Some of them classed it as da'if, weak, and others classed it as sahih. It was classed as sahih by al-Albani in Sahih Abi Daud. The fact that circumcision for women is prescribed in Islam is confirmed by the ahadith quoted above, not by this disputed hadith. But the scholars differed concerning the ruling, and there are three opinions. Now, lots of Muslims try to throw out this hadith from Sunan Abu Daud. Worst thing they can do. The practice of female circumcision is established in the Sahih narrations. But the disputed hadith in Sunan Abu Daud is where Muhammad says not to go to the extreme in cutting, i.e. don't cut out the entire clitoris, only cut off part of it. When you throw out this hadith, you don't have any restrictions, and female circumcision is whatever the doctor and the family want it to be. Muslim translators who are convinced that this hadith is authentic even distort texts about female circumcision to bring the texts into line with Muhammad's restriction. For instance, this is Reliance of the Traveler. It's a manual of Sharia. Odd that a manual of Sharia would be more than a thousand pages long when Linda Sarsour can sum up Sharia in a single tweet. I don't drink alcohol, don't eat pork, I follow Islamic way of living. That's all Sharia is. Let's look at the translator's version of what Reliance of the Traveler says about female circumcision. Circumcision is obligatory for both men and women. The O indicates that this is a comment from Sheikh Omar Barakat. For men, it consists of removing the prepuce from the penis, and for women, removing the prepuce, Arabic bazar, of the clitoris not the clitoris itself, as some mistakenly assert. The N indicates that this is a comment from the translator, an American Muslim. And the final edition is an A, meaning a comment from Sheikh Abdul Wakil Duribi. Hanbalis hold that circumcision of women is not obligatory, but sunnah, while Hanafis consider it a mere courtesy to the husband. Notice that the translator translates bazar as prepuce of the clitoris, the skin at the end of the clitoris. But that's not what bazar means. Bazar means clitoris. When Abu Bakr, Muhammad's closest companion and the first of the rightly guided caliphs, insulted a pagan by telling him in volume 8, page 76 of the history of At-Tabari, go suck the clitoris of Alat, a goddess the man believed in, the Arabic word for clitoris is bazar. So here's what Reliance of the Traveler, a manual of Sharia, actually says without the creative additions. Circumcision is obligatory for every male and female by cutting off the piece of skin on the glands of the penis of the male. But circumcision of the female is by cutting out the clitoris. This is called hufad. Reliance of the Traveler says that female circumcision is cutting out the clitoris, and that it's obligatory. The translator waters this down because he's trying to bring the ruling into line with what Muhammad said about not going to an extreme 
in cutting. If you call that a weak hadith, you're left with cutting out the clitoris. Is female circumcision starting to sound like it has something to do with Islam? Uh-huh. From an Islamic perspective, there are only two areas for disagreement. First, how much of the clitoris should be cut off? A scholar's answer to that question will depend on whether he believes that the circumcision hadith in Sunan Abu Daud is strong or weak. And second, whether female circumcision is obligatory, a girl has to be circumcised, or it's just very highly recommended and you'll just be treated like a whore if you aren't circumcised. This brings us back to Islam question and answer. The three opinions of scholars are, one, that it is obligatory for both males and females, two, that circumcision is sunnah for both males and females, three, that circumcision is obligatory for men and is good and mustahab for women. Mustahab means recommended. The scholars conclude, Thus, it is clear that the fuqaha of Islam, the scholars of Islam, are agreed that circumcision is prescribed for both males and females, and in fact, the majority of them are of the view that it is obligatory for both. No one said that it is not prescribed, or that it is makru, meaning disliked, or haram, meaning forbidden. All of the scholars said that circumcision is prescribed for females. Most said that it's obligatory. No one said that it's disliked or forbidden. No one except American Muslims like Linda Sarsour and Reza Aslan. And here's what I find most amazing. You can go to some of Linda Sarsour's followers. You can show them what the Muslim sources say about female circumcision what actual Muslim scholars say about female circumcision, what Sharia manuals say about female circumcision. You can show them that what Linda Sarsour says about Islam totally contradicts what Muhammad and his companions and Islam's greatest scholars said about Islam. And they just don't care. Linda Sarsour tells them what they want to hear, and that's all that matters. That's terrifying. Not only because there's an entire generation out there that has no respect for facts or reality, but also because female genital mutilation is a real problem for young girls around the world. And by constantly attacking people who try to expose the problem, Sarsour is ensuring that future generations of Muslim girls will have their genitals mutilated in the name of Islam because no one ever deals with the problem. One person who is trying to do something about the female genital mutilation problem is Ayan Hirsi Ali. Sarsour once tweeted, Bridget Gabriel equals Ayan Hirsi Ali. She's asking for a censored whipping. I wish I could take their vaginas away. They don't deserve to be women. Linda Sarsour wants to take Ayan Hirsi Ali's vagina away. Why is this disturbing? Ayan Hirsi Ali is a former Muslim, and she's a victim of female genital mutilation. Islam already took part of her vagina. Sarsour wants to take the rest. Quite the champion of women's rights you've rallied behind there, feminists. But again, we can agree with Sarsour on one thing. Female genital mutilation is a barbaric practice that has no place anywhere in the world. But think about the obvious conclusion here. Premise one, female genital mutilation clearly has a place in Islam. Premise two, female genital mutilation has no place in this world. Therefore, Islam has no place in this world. Thanks for the new argument, Linda. In your honor, I'll call it the Sarsourian argument against Islam. Thank you.